We hear a lot of talk nowadays and people using the terminology backsliding believers. Did you get that? Backsliding believers. When I hear people speaking of using that terminology this morning of backsliding believers, it causes me this morning great concern. It causes me great concern this morning, child of God, because when I hear so many people today, and I'm sure you've heard the same, as they use the expression or the terminology of backsliding believers, People speak of it as if it's as if it's a late thing, or it's simply the norm as far as our day and our generation is concerned. And child of God this morning, when we refer to backsliding believers, we speak of such this morning, child of God, who are believers who continue, who continue to live in the sinful condition, to continue to live in the sinful state from which they have been saved from. Backsliding believers this morning, can I ask you a personal question? Do you think it's a light thing of such this morning? Do you think it's just the norm, especially for our day and for our generation, for believers just to live whatever way they want to live, to continue this morning to live in that same sinful condition, that same same sinful state with no conviction of doing so. Child of God, listen. To think of such this morning is a very dangerous thought to possess. I'm sure you're like myself this morning. You've heard so many people talk about people saying, oh, I know such and such they made a profession one time, but they have been nowhere for years. Ah, yes, they have a, a profession, all right. Yes, they made a profession, but for years they've been nowhere. They're back into the old ways. They're living the old life. And you know, child of God, that does make me concerned. In some cases, when we use the word backsliding believers, that causes me this morning to raise a question mark. I don't put a question mark above the word backsliding. I put a question mark this morning above the word believers. Because I have to ask myself this question this morning, were they really believers in the first place? I'm not allowed to judge this morning, but I am allowed to be concerned. I'm not allowed to judge such this morning, but I am allowed to be cautious. Backsliding believers, would be called, rather, maybe selfish saints would be a better title for some. Not for all, but for some. Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 14 says that a backslider in heart, get that this morning, the backslider in heart is filled with his own way. Of such this morning, George McConnell will never condemn. 
Because I have to look at my own heart. And I have to look at my own life. And I have to look upon such this morning and say, There go I, but for the grace of God. The Bible has a lot to say about backsliding. Jeremiah 5 and 6, their backslidings are increased. Hosea chapter 14 and verse 4, he says, I will heal their backsliding. But I want you to notice something this morning, child of God, I never saw before until yesterday evening. The Bible has much to say about backsliding. And the Bible refers to people, uh, much about people concerning backsliding. But I noticed that it's all in the Old Testament. Nobody is ever referred to as backsliding in the New Testament. God wants to speak to us this morning in a stronger sense concerning the Word. God wants to speak to us in a way, child of God, in a stronger sense concerning this this morning, which I believe may perhaps leave us hearing the sounding of alarm bells concerning those folk this morning who remain to live happily, who remain to live content, and for those who remain to live comfortable in their supposed to be so-called backslidden state. My text this morning is found in 2 Peter 2 and verse 22. It's something the Lord has drawn my attention to. But it has happened unto them, according to the true proverb, the dog is turned to his own vomit again, and the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. Two things in that verse stick out. Vomit. Mire. Vomit, mire. Child of God, nothing, nothing is more disgusting or awful than vomit. The very thought of it causes me almost to wrench this morning. Would you agree with me on that? And it's the same with mire. There's nothing more disgusting and awful than the mire. And yet, child of God, this morning, this is the picture that the Word of God really lets us see of sin. You know what I believe has happened to all of us? Listen, the man in the pulpit's no different. I'll tell you what I believe has happened to us all. We have all become immune to the awfulness of sin. I don't believe sin disgusts us anymore the way it used to be. This is what the Lord wants to say to us. The Lord wants to draw our thoughts this morning from this little phrase. The sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. I hear a lot of people today making excuses about their supposed to be backslidden condition. You know the Word of God this morning, not George McConnell, the Word of God this morning teaches me that any excuse we make are groundless excuses. A genuine backslider, listen to me, a genuine backslider will not want to continue in sin. I'll tell you the reason being, a genuine backslider this morning is the most miserable man on earth. I have never met a genuine, happy, go-lucky, as they describe it in the world, backslider. 
A genuine backslider this morning has got to be one of the most miserable people on earth. Their walk becomes weary. Their pathway becomes painful. Their bed is no longer the place of rest but remorse. And I wonder this morning, is there someone that this describes this morning? You're not walking this morning as you used to walk. Your walk is weary. Your pathway is painful, perhaps this morning, over some past sin that you have committed. Your bed, you can no longer rest. It's a place this morning of remorse. Your blessing has become bitterness. Your joy has become sorrow. Your song has become silent. Well, that's, that's the sign of a genuine backslider. Some say to me, George, does that mean I was never really saved? Does that mean, George, I was never really born again? Not one bit of it. Man can never be saved and lost. But listen to me. If there's one this morning and you're miserable, that's the sign this morning, yes, you belong to the true faith. It would concern me this morning, child of God, if you had a profession and it doesn't trouble you and you don't have any remorse and you're not sorrowful and you're not sad concerning that supposed to be backslidden state. It does concern me when people live contrary to the Word of God. They know they are being blatantly disobedient to the Word of God. And it does, friend, this morning concern me when, so, when such people this morning are not miserable in that state. This morning, our text shows us the sow that was washed. This shows us this morning, child of God, here's the unclean animal. She's scrubbed, she's washed, she's made, looking well, and all the rest of it. In the outward appearance, she looks wonderful. In the outward appearance, she looks clean. In the outward appearance, she looks well. But the true meaning to this is, she looks better, she may feel better, but she was never made better. Never made better. And, uh, and this morning, child of God, God is making, Peter is making this call. Such this morning, listen to me, of such this morning, they never had that genuine spiritual experience that only can make the inside well. Yes, they had the outward experience, but they never had the inward experience. And the great peril that I fear for so many today is the peril of a false profession. A sow washed. Oh, they've had the emotional feeling. Yes, they had the reformed attitude, but inwardly, child of God, this morning, there was no regeneration of heart and of soul. They profess, but they don't possess. Any man, any woman, whether young or old this morning, who continues to live as a backslider, who continues to live in a so-called backslidden condition, who continues to live in that sinful condition, in that sinful state, and who believe that they're saved, and yet they feel comfortable, and they feel, feel content this morning. Listen to me. It's only a delusion, and it's a fatal one.
You can't expect a hen to live like a fish. And you can't expect a fish to live like a hen. The same way you can't expect a child of God to continue to live like the child of the devil. Do you remember? Let's take, let's take one. Let's take two, for instance. Do you remember the night, Peter? That awful night. That dark night when Peter denied the Lord. You remember that night when one of the boys come over and says, surely, surely, hold on a minute, surely you're one of them. No, not the man, Peter says, and no, not the man. And about an hour later, another, this time a wee maid comes over and says, surely, surely you were with him. I know you're with him. I've seen you. And he denies the second time. And then the third time, another comes over. And this time, Peter begins to swear. He begins to curse like a trooper. And with curses and oaths and curses, he denies the Lord. If you were standing beside Peter that night, you know the first thing you would think? The man's never saved. Peter, he's cursing away like a trooper saying he doesn't know the Lord. How can that man call himself a disciple? You and I, you and I this morning would have Peter stroked off the list. Oh, but he was never saved. Listen to the way he's talking. He's cursing. He's swearing. He's denying the Lord. Listen to him. Wouldn't you have him stroked off? I know I would. But then there was something about Peter. There's something I see in Peter. Sorry, I saw in Peter. I see very little of today. You know what it is? It's called godly son. Ah, oh, Peter, friend, Peter. It says when Peter had fell, he went out and he wept bitterly. Bitterly. How could I have done that? How could I have said that? How could I have said those things? You know what 2 Corinthians 7 and 10 says? It says, Godly sorrow leadeth to repentance. Ah, yes. Ah, yes. Let's take David as another example. You remember David, the sweet psalmist of Israel? The one that penned those lovely words, the Lord's my shepherd. Jim has just reminded us of that this morning. The Lord's my shepherd, therefore shall I lack nothing. Do you remember that's the same man who penned those words? And yet, friend, this man fell. He committed adultery, and then he committed murder. Hi, but there came a time, child of God, when it grieved his heart, when sorrow plagued his mind, and he prayed in Psalm 51, Return unto me the joy of thy salvation. Genuine backsliders will never be content, and they could never be happy, continuing living in their sinful state unconditioned. Oh, child of God, this is all groundless excuses this morning. Why? I hear people saying, ah, it's my old nature, you know. It's the old nature, and the devil wreaks havoc with my old nature. Well, you know what 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 17 says? Therefore, if any man's in Christ, he's a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. But that doesn't mean we don't struggle, because I struggle with it. There's still parts of the old George McConnell has to be hit square in the head yet because he loves to raise up a thing.
Christ this morning. Christ is the true source of not only the outer change, but the inward change. What does John 1 verse 12 say? But as many as received him to them, give he power to become or to behave like the sons of God. Can a, can a true child of God be content? Can a true child of God feel comfortable? Can a true child of God go on and continue, continue to, to live the way he once lived? And feel content and feel comfortable? Here's one marker of a true child of God who has fallen. Hebrews 12 and verse 6, listen to it. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son that he receiveth. See, if God allows you to continue on the way you are, and you're continuing on and you're rejoicing in it and you're loving it and you're enjoying it just the same way an old sow enjoys wallowing in the mire. And friend, nothing seems to happen to you. God doesn't chastise you. I would ask yourself serious questions. For whom the Lord loveth? Jesus. not. You know, child of God, it's all because this morning of a Christless experience. You can make a sow look whatever way you want her to look. You can doll her up, dress her up, pretty her up, but you're still a sow when it comes to it. I remember I had a gospel mission for my good friend, Pastor Bertie Johnson. January 2011. The opening night of that gospel mission, I preached on the woman by the well. There came out a woman that meeting, you called her Doreen. Call her Doreen. Doreen came out with her Bible. Doreen came out with her long dress on. Doreen came out with her head covered. Doreen came out looking the part, but Doreen came out in floods and floods of tears. I didn't know the lady. Didn't know her. I says, dear, come on you in with me a wee second and we'll chat them. You know what she said to me? She says, George, I've been bluffing this for you. I'm not saved at all. I told them that night, or the Lord told them that night, listen, we can live whatever way we want to live, but the Lord, as the Lord could see into this woman's heart and could tell her all that she had done, I says, the Lord can look into your heart and knows exactly where and how you are. And friend, through that, God spoke to her. She looked the part, she acted the part, and talked the part, but she wasn't ever seen. You see, the difference between a sheep and a sow is this. A sow, will, a sow can't get into the mire quick enough, but a sheep can't get out of it quick enough. Sheep will never feel comfortable in the mire. We have a, we, up in our part of the country, we have a show called the Clutter Valley Show. Anybody ever heard of the Clutter Valley Show? It's the miniature Balmoral show, only it's outside Clacker. Many, many years ago, my uncle James and my cousin George Reed decided to take <clears throat> one of the sows that he had to Balmoral's show and dick her up and dress her up. They got a wee pink bow, sorry, a big pink bow tied it around her neck and they'd done tied wee bows to her curly tail and 
and they took the whole day and they scrubbed her to the scrubber clean no more. That brush and they scrubbed her hooves and all the rest of it and brought her to the Clahar Valley show. And they came joint second and there she got her wee, they had a wee rosette and all tied onto her. Oh, she was, she looked wonderful, she looked great. But then they brought her home and man, there was this proudest punch. It was like a sort of a, a fancy dress, an animal fancy dress thing. But anyway, they brought her home and they had a, like a wee cattle trailer and they had straw and all in it to make sure she wouldn't get dirty. And man, she, she was just like the queen. She was just like royalty. But the brother and the reverse, the cattle trailer, back up again, uh, the piggery door. But beside the piggery, there was what you farmers used to call the duckle. You know what I mean when I'm talking about the duckle? It's not a nice, you know what it means, William John. It's not a nice place to be. But here, when they took the two pegs out and dropped the back door and the sow got out, where was her first race time? Rosette, pink bows, the whole lot, into the middle of the duckle. And man, she rolled in it, and man, she slapped about in it, and man, she couldn't get into it quick enough. You want to know what happened? My uncle James and my cousin George were nearly worse than the sow the time they got her back out of it. Ah, you see. See, this is what happens, you know. You can dress an old sow up whatever way you want to dress her, but she's still a sow at the end of it. Nothing has changed with the nature. But you take a sheep, it's a different animal. It may accidentally fall into the mud hole or go into a puddle, but you watch a sheep. Man, the sheep can't get out of it quick enough. She doesn't feel at home in the mud hole. Well, it's an old mongrel sheep. She'll not want to stay in the mud hole. She wants to get out of it. Listen, the night George McConnell was saved on the 26th of August, 1985, I come out of the mud hole and I've no desire to go back into it. I can say this morning, listen, what a wonderful change in my life has been wrought since Jesus, glory to God, came into my heart. Came into my heart. It went from the pub to the prayer meeting. It went from heart to heaven. It went from tenants to truth. It went from the bottle to the Bible. Glory to God. You want to know someone else? That's almost, what's that now, 28 years. Maybe it is 20, it is 28 years. And from that day to this day, I have no desire whatsoever to go back into them old slain pits of the world. You know, friend, when Christ comes in, He changes your nature. He doesn't, yes, He makes us inwardly perfect, aye, but we all still fall, don't we? We all slip. We all can slide, child of God. But it's when we feel comfortable in that slidden state and when we actually enjoy being down there, then we're no different from the sow wallowing in the mire. No different. Thank God, George McConnell, who once was a sow, I'm now a sheep. And I can say the Lord, the Lord is my shepherd. Oh, friend, I can tell you something now. I can say now none but Christ can satisfy. None other name for me. I tell you why that is, because there's love, there's life, and there's everlasting joy. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus found in me. Thank God. Thank God. I may not I may not be the person that I should be. I know that. And I confess that. I may not be the person that I should be, but thank God I'm not the person that I used to be. Christ hath made me whole. George McConnell, the sow who became a sheep, his sheep. May God 
Fully. Fully. Challenge all of us with the truth of his word this morning.